Okay, now we'll be going over the more advanced functions that you can do in dplyr. So these more advanced functions include summarize each, summarize all, mutate each, mutate all, mutate if, mutate at, and transmutate. So a few examples are shown below. First, let's talk about summarize each. Now, summarize each allows you to summarize multiple variables at once. And note there's also a mutate each function. So for example, if you want to for each location, compute the minimum and maximum percent of women who had their blood taken, blood pressure measured, and urine sampled during an antenatal visit. You can do this by, again, first specifying the data set that we'll be working with. This is the age data set. And then grouping by location. And then summarizing each will include this function, f-u-n-s. And this just means that we'll be computing multiple mean and max values. So we will compute the mean using min for all rows in the data set, and then n.rm equaling true so that we can remove all of the na values. And again, we'll do this for the max, and this is for the columns blood, blood pressure, and your urine. So when we run this line of code, we see that the result is a tibble with dimensions 93 rows by seven columns, and we have for location, because again, we're grouping by location, we've computed the min and max values for each of the three variables that we're looking at. So now for mutate if. Mutate if allows you to mutate all columns with a certain property. So for example, if we want to create a new data set with all missing val values equaling zero, we can create a new subset of our data. I call this new underscore h, and this is the h data set that we'll be working with. And then we use the function mutate underscore if. So this mutates if there is a value that is numeric. And again, we'll use f-u-n-s because we're doing this multiple times. If else is dot na for all values in, in the data in the data set, we'll be setting that to zero, and then we're printing 30 rows of that. So now that you can see the result is a tibble of 22,041 rows and 28 columns, we have, again, location as our first column, year, and then we have for our variables in our data set. All of the NA values have now been changed to zeros. Finally, let's go over the transmutate function. So transmutate or transmute in dplyr, similarly to mutate, allows you to create new variables in a data set. But unlike mutate, transmutate will only include the newly created variables in your data set. So for example, if we want to create a new data set that only includes the ratio of the percentage of children who receive postnatal care to the percentage of women who receive postnatal care for each study site, we can do this by, again, first creating a new subset of our H data set. And I call this new subset trans underscore new underscore H. So we're going to take the H data set and then group by location and then transmute the ratio, so ratio is the name of our new column, and that equals the percentage of babies who receive postnatal care after birth divided by the percentage of women who received postnatal care after giving birth. And then we'll print five rows of that. And we can see the result is a tibble of 22,041 rows and two columns. And now we can see that our groups are location, and our only other column that is printed is ratio, and now the ratio is given for each survey of the percentage of children who receive postnatal care to the percentage of women who receive postnatal care.